everyone my name is Jen and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to another recommendations video and this one is kind of unique unique to me at least um, I have seen some other people do this specifically the one I remember is Tori from Novel Life did this um, and this is book recommendations based on the letters in my name so <laughs> I just thought this was a cool idea when I was kicking around some video ideas and this one is I'm going to be giving you a book recommendation for each letter of my name so I'm gonna do Jennifer which is my full legal name and give you a book recommendation you know J E N N and go through that um, but I wanted to up it one more and make it books that are like really significant to me um, books that people maybe have read because I talked about them or books that were just very significant to me. So they're all either six or five star reads. Some of them are childhood favorites. Some of them are books that I continually talk about all the time. But we're gonna go through these eight, hopefully make this a bit of a quicker video. Uh, but I just thought it would be fun and a unique one to do for myself. So let's go ahead and dive into these. And the first one I recommend, wanted to recommend is a childhood favorite. Um, it's one that I couldn't even tell you the first time I read it. I don't know what grade I was in, but I checked out the copy of this book at my high school at least once every six months, probably more than that, until I ended up getting my own eventually. I and mean, then that's going to be Just Listen by um, <laughs> Sarah Dessen. So I actually have my YA books um, packed away just because my YA contemporaries, I don't have the need to like pick up very often but this is one that I reread it not too long ago and it still was just as moving to me um this book was one of the first books I ever read that depicted the fallout from a sexual assault this was a very kind of like racy book for the age that I was when I read it for me anyway it was very thought-provoking um, this book is about a girl named Annabelle <laughs> who her family is going through some struggles right now one of her sisters has an eating disorder and then tried to kill herself one of her sisters is trying to break out of the box that her family has put her in and Annabelle kind of gets a little bit forgotten she isn't as lively as her oldest sister and she's not as troubled as her middle sister and so she's just kind of floating there and she's been through some trauma that no one knows about and through meeting a new friend named Owen <laughs> who they just end up through some events they end up being friends and end up hanging out together she learns how to just listen to her inner voice and to listen to what that voice is telling her and to be brave enough to face her accuser or I mean not her to accuse the person who had hurt her I just love this book I think it's so powerful it's a book that I want to always have on my shelf and to one day share with my daughter um should I be lucky enough to have one then I have another childhood favorite that really was one of the reasons why I was excited to do this because when I was thinking of the letters of my name you know the vowels are always the hardest ones to find but for me I was so excited because E means I get to talk about East. <laughs> this is one of the beautiful copies. I actually got this one as a gift from Crystal for Christmas last year but I have no less than five copies of East and its alternate title which was called North Child. I also have copies of that but this one is a retelling of East of the Sun and West of the Moon. Um, it is, there is this 16-year-old um, girl named Rose who ends up going on an adventure to save her sister's life and she must live in a castle with a white bear, not knowing why she needs to live there, but she needs to live there. And when she breaks the rules, she ends up needing to go on a journey to rescue the bear. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I just love this. This book, I've been reading this one since I was 12 years old, for sure. Um, I read this usually in the winter time, um, but I just love it so, so dearly. This originally came out in like 2003, I think. It's coming up on like its 20th anniversary. Yeah, it was first published in 2003, which is amazing. 
um, that it's still hold like I reread this just this last Christmas with my best friend we will read it to each other and it was just as powerful and just as moving to me then as it ever ever was um, this has so many beautiful like Norwegian um, fairy tale aspects east of the sun west of the moon is one of their most famous like fairy tales and I just love it so much and yeah it's just so close to my heart it's so close to my heart it means so much to me now getting into some more you know more of the gen level of romance that we're used to we have n for never seduce a scott <laughs> this is by maya banks i first read this just back in july i believe um i was completely entranced by this book this is about our heroine eveline who is considered touched in the head by her family. She's actually deaf after an accident, but she uses their supposed belief that she is touched in the head to save her from a unsavory arranged marriage, which she would have been in an abusive relationship if it had went through, until the king steps in and forces her into a marriage with a completely different person whose name is Graham Montgomery. Now the Montgomerys and the Armstrongs have been sworn enemies for a long time and the king is like no more of this you two are going to get married and you're going to done be done feuding um now eveline is very scared to do this and again everyone thinks that she's touched so they think this is a very disturbing thing for her to have to be married um graham has heard that she's touched in the head so he's kind of resigned himself that he will just not be intimate with his wife and that they will just he will basically be her caretaker and in him being willing to do that eveline sees him for the wonderful man that he is and she actually feels safe enough to explain to him what's going on and they have a beautiful beautiful relationship i highly recommend this book then for the next N, I went with Neon Gods by Kitty Robert. This author, as y'all know, I have been a stan of hers for many years now. I've been a fan of her mafia work, her sexy BDSM work, her, um, her Wicked Villain series. I have just been a huge fan. So nothing makes me happier than the fact that source books picked up her, um, <laughs> her Dark Olympus series. And I read this book as an arc first, as I am happy to read all of Katie's books. But this one just made me so happy because she had leveled up um, into this and wrote this book that has had such wide appeal and has brought her so much like notoriety through like social media and TikTok and the, you know, greater reading group as a whole. And I just love that. So this book, I love Hades and Persephone retellings. This is one of my favorite. I love what a alpha mello this Hades is. He's so soft and squishy inside, but only for Persephone. And this series just makes me so happy. I have read the next book in this one, by the way. Um, but this book just made me so happy. So I highly recommend it. Then we get to I. Um, Oh, I'm so excited to share this one. Um, this is a book that we read for Rake Appreciation Society because it is one of my besties, favorite historicals ever, and that is Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. Now, I've shared, I was very intimidated to read a Beverly Jenkins, okay? I have heard thoughts that cover the whole gamut for this. I was afraid that I would not be in a category of someone who was totally in love with her writing. But at least for this book, guys, I was completely enamored with it. I was completely enthralled. The story of Hester and um, Galen is so brave and beautiful and sexy and triumphant. Um, Hester is a escaped slave and she still is a conductor for the Underground Railroad. So she hides um, runaway slaves in her uh, settler and the black Daniel as he's known is also a very famous um, slavery fighter he helps free slaves and he gets injured on one of his runs and so he needs to stay with Hester in her cellar for a while and they <laughs> begrudgingly grow close to each other begrudgingly on Hester's side and 
when he is healed and ready to be on his way, we learn that there's more to him than what meets the eye. And Hester, I think, is not prepared for the amazing romance that's coming her way. I was just completely enamored with the story. I loved it so, so much, so dearly. It was absolutely beautiful. Then for F, I have to share Filthy Rich by Serena Ackroyd. This is probably my favorite book in this series. This is book two in the Filthy Feckers, the Five Points Mob Collection. Um, this book is about Owen and Anessa, and they are forced into an arranged marriage. Um, Owen is like in his late 30s, and Anessa is only 18 years old. And she is coming from an abusive household where she's been very mistreated and she's very afraid that she's going to go from one horrible place to another. She is the daughter of the Brava. So um, Owen, who is from the Irish mob, they don't think very highly of the Bratva scum. So she's very worried that she's going to be mistreated. Her father wants her to be a spy in this household and bring him back information. She refuses to do that and it um, gets her in a lot of trouble with her father. When Owen first sees her at their wedding, he realizes that she's been abused. He's able to tell because she is in extreme pain on their wedding day. And he determines in that moment that he is going to cherish this woman and make her feel safe and that they are going to have, if not a beautiful marriage, they're going to have a partnership and it's going to be good. Of course, all the romance and beauty comes later. Then for another E, I wanted to share The Earl Takes All. So we'll go with the Earl part of this. Um, I did not know what to expect when I read this book. This is a book about um, twin brothers, Edward and Harry. Is it Edward and Harry? And now um, the one of the brothers dies in Africa. So his twin brother pretends to be him, pretends that he's the one who died so that he can be his sister-in-law's husband um, and kind of like keep her from miscarrying their child because she's had some fertility issues in the past, um, had some trouble with miscarriages before. They don't want that to happen this time. So he takes it in his head to pretend to be his brother. And of course, that secret is going to come out and it may just ruin everything that they're building between each other because it's all been built on a lie. This book to me is the epitome of Lorraine Heath. There are other books of hers that are more well known. There are others that are whatever they are. But this one is just so bonkers, but so beautiful and so passionate and so lovely that it's just everything that I want. <laughs> It's so amazing. And I feel like it's proper that it be recommended in this video. And then the last one I want to talk about is mostly representative of the journey that I've had with this author this year. Um, I've read quite a few of their works this year and I've had varying opinions about it. But the one thing that I have not varied on is how fascinating and moving, courageous and bold her stories are. So for the R in Jennifer, I have Real by Kennedy Ryan. Um, this book is so heartbreakingly beautiful, wonderfully written, um, lyrically spoken. If you listen to the audiobooks, it is about an actress named Neva and her director named um, Cannon. Sorry, his name just went out of my head. And the beautiful love story that they embark on when Neva gets asked to be his lead actress in a new film. Um, He's immediately tempted by her. He needs to hold back for business reasons, but the draw between them is just so powerful and beautiful. And this relationship is so moving and wonderful. And I just, I had to recommend it again. I know a lot of people love this book. I know a lot of people might be scared. I will say this one's a standalone, even though there'll be more standalones in the series. So if you've been burned by her before, like I have with cliffhangers, I promise this one doesn't have one. Um, it's extremely powerful and beautiful though. So anyway, yeah, so those are the books I'm recommending that spell out my name. I hope you will give them a try and think of me when you do. Um, again, this was kind of a unique, weird video to make, but I've been wanting to try it out. So there we go. This is one that I could definitely redo because there are other books that spell out my name too. Maybe I'll do my last name next time. It'll be fun.
but thank you so much for watching this video i put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch some more of them right now bye